Midjourney Alpha is the brand new web-based version of the Midjourney software, which means you no longer have to use Discord to use Midjourney. In this video, I'll show you my five favorite features of Midjourney Alpha, and make sure you stick around until the end because I'll also tell you about another AI art generation software that actually interprets text much better than Midjourney. Let's jump in. The first thing you need to know about Midjourney Alpha is that it's not currently available to everyone. So you need to be an existing user of Midjourney to have an opportunity to use Midjourney Alpha. Now, it's coming very soon for all users, but let's check out the announcement from Midjourney to find out exactly who is eligible. So I'm inside the Discord, the Midjourney Discord right here. And as I mentioned, with Midjourney Alpha, we don't even have to mess with this Discord anymore. But here's the announcement from Midjourney. It's from David H that says, we're opening up our web alpha to everyone with 100 images or more. And you can use backslash info in the Discord to find out how many jobs you have. So if you have created 100 images or more with Midjourney in Discord, you automatically have access to the web version right now. They go on to say the major differences between this and our normal website are A, the ability to make images on web, and B, the ability to help test early public rooms and make images together, just click on rooms. But as you're gonna see in this video, those aren't even close to the best features. I absolutely love this new web version of the software and I'm gonna show you my five favorite features. If you are an existing Midjourney user with 100 or more images created, you're gonna to go to alpha.midjourney.com to use the web version of the software. And when you do, you're gonna be taken here to this web version of the software and it's absolutely awesome. And that brings me to my first favorite feature of Midjourney Alpha and that's the fact that it Hey, if you're enjoying this video and you wanna learn how to use AI in your creative e-commerce business to get more done, make more money, and save time, I wanna tell you about AI Profit Club. AI Profit Club is a next generation training program and community to help creative e-commerce sellers make more money, get more done, and save a ton of time. If you wanna check out AI Profit Club, you can go over to kerryegler.com slash AI, and you can actually try out our entire program for $1 for your first 14 days. You can cancel any time, and it's gonna be well worth you going and checking it out. So it's $1 for your first 14 days. Just go over to kerryegler.com slash AI first favorite feature of Midjourney Alpha, and that's the fact that it's not in Discord. If you're like me, I'm not a huge fan of Discord. Now, I know a lot of people love Discord, a lot of people use it for a lot of different things, but I just want you to look in Discord. If we go into the Midjourney uh, area of Discord here, we have so many different rooms and different things in here that it can be very, very confusing to use. And even just using the, the regular you know, Midjourney to create images can be very confusing for a lot of people. So I love that Midjourney Alpha isn't in Discord. It just makes it so much easier to use. You can see right up here at the top that now where it says imagine, we just have to type in exactly what we wanna see, press the enter button, and we're gonna be able to create images. So I think for the everyday person, this makes Midjourney so much easier to use and to get started with, and it's gonna bring this to the masses. My second favorite feature of Midjourney Alpha is the settings. I love the way the settings are laid out. Now, if you remember before in Discord, you had to type backslash settings, enter, then they were brought up, then you could adjust the settings there with a few different buttons. Inside Midjourney Alpha, we just click on this settings button right here, and we're gonna have most of our common settings right here in this little layout, and it, I just love the way it's laid out. Things like aspect ratio, where before, you know, you would have to type dash dash AR, and then you'd have to know the exact aspect ratio. Now, we can either select portrait, square, or landscape, or we can just drag this slider to adjust our aspect ratio, and it even gives us a visual right there on screen of how it's gonna look. This just makes it so much better and so much, so much more visually appealing and easier to use uh, to adjust these different things. As we move towards the right in our settings, in the middle here, we see aesthetics. We have our stylization, weirdness, and variety. And if you just mouse over these, they'll tell you what these affect. And we can just drag the slider to the right or the left to adjust these different parameters. Now before in Discord, this was our dash dash stylize, our dash dash weird, and our chaos options. They've changed them a little bit here to make them much, much easier to use. And as we move towards 
completely to the right, then we have our model. We can select our mode, whether we want standard photos or raw photos. We can select the version of Midjourney that we wanna use. I think six is the best, but there's other versions there. And we can also select the speed that images generate at, and obviously this is gonna be depending on which plan you have. My third favorite feature of Midjourney Alpha is it's faster. Now, I've had a couple of people tell me this. They've said, I think the web version is faster. And in my head, that doesn't necessarily make a ton of sense because I think it's probably using the same uh, you know, process behind the scenes as it is in Discord, but I tested it directly against the same prompt in Discord, and yet it was faster. It actually generated the images in about three or four seconds quicker than it did in Discord. So I know it doesn't sound like a lot, but if you're generating 100 images in a day, that's gonna save you quite a bit of time uh, that you can get other things done. So I love getting my images a little bit faster because that's one of the things that can be a little bit you know, frustrating about AI is you have to wait and wait and wait for it to go. And so now they've actually sped it up a little bit with this alpha version. My fourth favorite feature is it's organized. I love the way it's organized. In Discord, I always felt like everything was kind of jumbled. Everything was kind of all over the place. Sure, you could create the servers where you could have, you know, different categories or different servers for different types of images, but it always felt pretty chaotic. And so I love the way that this is organized. Let me walk you through it. So first we've got our explore tab. Now we've got our imagine up here at the top where we can create images, which is really nice because as we're exploring through you know, the community here and what other people are creating, we, can, we might wanna look at one of these, click on it and see the prompt right here and then use that prompt right up here in the imagine section to create something and really get inspired by this other art. So I love that you can look through different pieces of art, draw inspiration from them and then start imagining your own art right in the same, uh, in the same place. The next tab over here is the create tab. This is where you're gonna see all of your image generations uh, that you've created, starting from your most recent, you know, through to your oldest. And you can also continue to create images right here uh, in the create section, but you're gonna be able to find all of your images right here. Now, if you go over to archive, you're also going to see your images but archive is really cool because you can actually organize some of your images here in this section. Now over on the right, you're gonna get a bunch of different options. You're gonna be able to create folders. Let's say you had t-shirt designs, then you had mock-ups, then you had you know, something else, social media or something like that. You could create different folders for those categories and actually place your images in those folders. Then you're also gonna have filters like uh, images you've liked, uh, images that were created with different versions images that are created as tiled, you know, patterns, different things like that. So you're gonna see a bunch of different options here to easily find what you need, which is pretty awesome. You can also even search by prompt. So if you used a certain word to get one of these images, you could search for that right up there in the search bar for, some, for a word used in the prompt to bring up that image. So I love this. My fifth favorite thing is how easy they've made image upload, describe, style reference, and character reference. These are all kind of part of one section of Midjourney Alpha, and I wanna show you how those work right now. Right up here in the Imagine section, we can type out our prompt, but we can also hit this plus button. When we do that, we're gonna see some different options. You're gonna see choose a file or drop it here. That means you can upload an image from your computer right there. And you're also gonna see any images that you've uploaded in the past. So these are a few of the images that I've uploaded to Midjourney in the past, right? Now before, when you wanted to upload an image, you had to drag it into Discord. And then if you wanted to use it in any way, you had to go and open it up in another tab. You had to grab the link. Then you had to add that to your prompt. And it was pretty confusing. I've done some tutorials on this. I do some training inside my AI Profit Club uh, uh, program on this, and it can be pretty confusing. So with Alpha, we can actually just upload a file right from our computer, and then we have access to these amazing features like character reference, style reference, describe, a bunch of different things here pretty, pretty easily and simply. So the first thing I wanna show you is how easy it is to use the describe function. Now, if you're not familiar with Midjourney Describe, what, what this allows you to do is this allows you to take any image and you can have Midjourney give you the prompt for that image. So it will actually tell you, you know, approximately what you could put in to get a similar image. So let's say you find an image on the web, just a random image from somewhere, 
and you wanna know how could I prompt Midjourney to give me something similar? Well, Describe will tell you how to do that. So let me give you an example. So I found this picture of The Simpsons on Google. I downloaded it to my computer and I upload it right here in this upload section. All that I have to do with any of these images is just click on this little eye icon right here on any of these images. If I just click on that, it's instantly going to give me a bunch of different stuff here. It's gonna give me the subject, you know, an idea for the subject, and it's gonna give me a ton of descriptors that I could then use in a prompt to maybe get something similar. You can do this with any image. Now, many of these images were created in Midjourney, but if I just click on any of these, if I click on this eye, it will tell me uh, what kind of words that I could use. So this is really useful when you see a style, uh, an image with a style that you really wanna duplicate in Midjourney, you can upload it right here, and then you can just use the describe function, that little I, to figure out how to prompt for it. In addition to that, if I click on one of these images, so if I just click on it, it's going to add that image right up here into my new generation, and now I can prompt with that image influencing my prompt. Now before, when we wanted to do something like style reference or character reference, we had to add a bunch of different stuff. We had to have the URL for the uh, image. We had to have dash dash SREF or, or a CREF, right? And then we had to add the URL after that. And then we had to have the character weight or the style weight. Now, if we just click on it, we can select right here whether we want style reference or character reference. So if we click on this little uh, paper clip, that's gonna give us style reference. You can see it highlighted right there. If we click on this little person icon, that's gonna give us character reference. Now, really quickly, if you don't know what style reference and character reference is, let me explain those real quick. Character reference is going to allow you to create consistent characters across your images in Midjourney. So let's say you create a person and you want that person to do different poses and wear different clothes and be in different settings. You can do that now with character reference. This is one of the coolest things in Midjourney and now it's so incredibly simple to do right here with this new feature. Style reference is when you find an image that you want to create more images that have that same style, you can use style reference. So I'll give you an example of that real quick. I used this image earlier that you just saw right here of these flowers. Let me see if I can open that. There you go. This is like kind of a hand drawing of flowers. And I used it right here with style reference to create an eagle soaring through the sky in that same style. Now you can see in my prompt, I just put an eagle soaring through the sky in front of mountains. I used a style weight of 40, and I used that, that uh, drawing of uh, flowers, and this is what I got. I got four eagles that looked the same, basically the same style as that uh, flower drawing, right? So style reference allows you to just create a bunch of different images that have the same style. Now character reference, again, is when you want to have consistent characters. You can see that here. So I used this image right here that I've created in the past of this, this guy right here, uh, which is kind of a clothing mock-up, and I put him on a beach in a white shirt, and I used the character weight of 40 in this example, and you can see here that by using that character, that image for character reference, I was able to generate different poses, different settings, different clothes for the same character. Now, all I have to do to do this, instead of putting dash dash CREF or SREF like I did in the past, all I need to do is put in my prompt, type whatever I want, and then I put dash dash CW for character weight, which means how much do I want the existing photo of the character to influence my new one. And I can do that between zero and 100. And I can also do style weight, so dash dash SW. And that means how much do I want the style of the existing image to influence my new generation. And that's how you do it. It's way easier than it was in the past because all I have to do is just upload the image, click on it, and it's ready for style reference, it's ready for character reference, or it's ready for the describe function. As I mentioned in the beginning, I wanna tell you about another AI art generation software that actually interprets text way better than Midjourney. You can watch a full video on that software by just clicking here.